So here we have two of the best CPUs from both platforms, Intel 12900K and Ryzen 9 59. 50X. Both of them 16 cores, but one of them hybrid architecture with performance and efficiency cores, whereas the other one fully performance cores and 32 threads. We have here 16 cores, yet 24 threads. So, which one is better? Well, let's put these two head to head. Artgrid is an online stock footage platform that offers the highest quality stock video from HD to 8K, ProRes, Log and RAW formats. Active subscription provides you access to unlimited downloads and a royalty-free worldwide license. The license doesn't expire even when the subscription has been cancelled. Artgrid catalog is updated daily and the subscription can be configured to fit your needs. Get two months for free when joining Artgrid through the links in the description below. First, they want to address the power draw versus power consumption. At 100% load, the rise Ryzen 9 5950X pulls around 130 watts from the socket and that's at stock settings. When we move on to the Intel, Intel can pull up to 240 watts from the socket. Yet in my test benching setup with the latest BIOS update, I'm seeing roughly around 220 watts pulled, which is still a lot more than the Ryzen at stock settings. But at power consumption in terms of the efficiency, Intel is a petter pick because the idle consumption is much lower. And if you put it through like a everyday work workload task where it's not at 100% utilization at all the time, then Intel will get a better power consumption out from the chip. I've made a complete another video going more in depth and showing you the actual test of what I did over there. So please feel free to check that out if that interests you. Secondly, cooler requirements. Because of the higher power draw, people might say that you need a better cooler for the Intel system because it just pulls more power. So if you're utilizing the CPU more, then you might need a better cooler. And partially, I would agree with you that yes, you do need a better cooler for the Intel one, like the minimum required cooler for the Intel one is higher than the AMD's. For example, the Ryzen 5950X can be cooled down with much less affordable and some of the less powerful air coolers, whereas Intel really requires some better cooling. Yet at the same time, if you look at in real world scenario, I think people who buy both of these systems most likely will be running very high end air coolers or a 360 millimeter liquid coolers. In that case, both of these systems will do fine, yet Intel will run hotter, but that's kind of the character of the chip and you just can't do anything about it. It will run hotter. Now about our test setups. For the AMD system, we're using our X570 Pro Art setup, which is the Ryzen 5950X. We're running this on Asus X570 Pro Art Creator motherboard. We're using the Noctua NHD 15 cooler. We're using 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury RAM running at 3600 MHz CL18, We're using Kyria C440 for the operating drive and Seagate FireQ 530 for the project drive where the benchmarks are on. The GPU is an Asus TUF RTX 1390 and the system is in the Fractal Torrent case and we're using the Fractal 860 watt power supply. On the Intel system, we're using the Asus Z690 creator build setup that we use for the 12th gen. The CPU is the 12900K. We're using the ASUS ProArt Z690 Creator motherboard. For cooler, we're using the Fantex Glacier 1 360mm AIO with 6 fan in push and pull configuration in the case. And the fans are the Fantex T30 fans that are absolutely amazing, like the best fans in the world as well. For RAM, we're using 64GB of DDR5. That's 4 sticks of 16GB at 4800MHz. Our SSD configuration is exactly the same. Our GPU is the same ASUS RTX 1390 and our system is in the Fantex P600A and the power supply is an ROG Thor 1200 watt. Let's have a look at the benchmarks then. By the way, in some of the benchmarks, I also did the test with the PBO enabled where the Ryzen system pulls roughly around 190 to 200 watts from the socket, basically letting the CPU run a little bit more power through to see if we can get better performance out from there. It's just a one click from BIOS in AMD BIOS, but just to compare it from the stock setting versus the 12900K as well. So Cinebench R23 single and multi-score. 
When looking at the PBO score, we can see that the single core dropped roughly around 3%, yet at the multi core we gained roughly about 13.5%. In the single core, the 12900K is 21.3% faster than 5950X. In the multi-core performance, the 12900K is 8.3% faster than the 5950X. Let's move on to Geekbench 5, which is more like everyday task, whatever you're doing and so on. In here, we didn't do the test with the PBO on enabled, so we're just gonna look at 12900K versus 5950X. The single core is 16.8% faster on the 12900K and the multi-core 5.3% faster. Not as much as on the Cinebench R23, but still faster. Moving on to Blender where we can really push all of the CPU power through to see how it works in rendering different Blender scenes. I measured three Blender scenes, the BMW, Classroom and Victor. In BMW, the 12900K is 7% slower. Bear in mind in here it's flipped because the higher the benchmark over here the slower it is because the benchmark is in seconds in classroom benchmark scene the 12900k is 3.8 percent slower and the victor render we are 17 percent slower so that really shows that when we're pushing long 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 renders like the victor render is we can see that the 5950x pulls more and more ahead and leaves the 12900k further and further behind but moving on to real world applications like photoshop the ryzen 5950x pbo enabled interestingly enough is performing worse than in stock settings in overall score we're roughly five percent slower in gpu score we're roughly four percent slower in general score we're also roughly about four percent slower and in filter score we're roughly about five percent slower so in this application looks like enabling the pbo is not a good idea moving on to 12900k we can see that in overall we're 15.3 percent faster in gpo performance we're 17 percent faster in general score we're 15 percent faster and in filter score, we're roughly 15% faster again. Most likely this is due to the single core performance of the chip and Photoshop can't really utilize all of the score you know, generally. But even taking that into account, the 12900K is still roughly around 15% faster moving on to another photo editing application adobe lightroom classic in overall score when we look at the 5950x pbo enabled it's roughly around two percent slower and as you can see the active and passive scores are roughly in the same ballpark so looks like enabling the pbo is not a good idea in lightroom classic either when we're looking at the 12900k in lightroom classic we can see that the overall score is about 10 percent faster an active score roughly about the same but passive score about 12 percent faster but this is interesting over here because the passive score measures the exporting of photos which means the more cores the more threads the better but you can see that even though the Ryzen 5950X has 32 threads, it's still lower than the 12900K, which just is an interesting observation. Moving on to video editing and Premiere Pro. When enabling the PBO on the 5950X, we're roughly dropping about 10% performance. And you can see in different sections, we're still dropping performance. GPU performance drops the less, but extended live playback drops the most. So you're probably getting the point that enabling PBO as a creator, not a good idea really. But when we're looking at the 12900K, our extended overall score is 18.7% faster. Standard overall, 12.9% faster. Extended export score, 25% faster, which is huge. Thinking that the more threads, more cores you have is a better export score. Yet our 12900K is actually 25% faster, which is insane. Extended live playback score, 23.3% faster. That's due to the iGPU inside the processor that helps us to encode and decode footage. Standard export score, we're roughly about the same, which just shows that if you're just exporting maybe H.264 or five codex standard exports like that, then both of the chips will perform in the export score very similarly. Yet standard live playback score is 25% faster on the Intel side. 
FX score, so that CPU effects is 7% faster, the GPU effects is 9% faster. So when we're looking at like in detail in Premiere Pro, we can see that different parts of how the processor acts with different tasks that you're doing. And the Intel is beating the AMD Ryzen 5950X a lot over here. Bear in mind, DDR5 is a comparison over here as well. And DDR5 will add extra performance in there. And it's not really fair comparison, but what we're saying over here is when we have both of the platforms like balls to the wall, then we're getting these scores. It will be interesting to do actually DDR4 on 12900K versus this DDR4. Would be interesting to see what that performance difference would be. Let me know if you want to know this in the comments below. When we're looking at the After Effects, unfortunately here I can't give you a comparison because since the 5950X benchmarks, Fuji Bench has changed the benchmarking score and it's not actually the same anymore. So I can't give you the difference how they work in there. But moving on to DaVinci Resolve, in here unfortunately I still didn't do the PBO test but I still recommend you to not have it on because the other processes that I've tried to have BBO enabled, it doesn't give you much performance. Sometimes rather you have less performance from the chip. So I would leave the PBO off. But looking at the 12900K compared to the 5950X, in extended overall score, we're 8% faster. In standard overall score, we're 9% faster. In 4K media, we're 6% faster. And in 8K media, roughly about 7% faster. In GPU effects, 3% faster. In Fusion, 15% faster. And as you can see in Fusion, that's where we can see the single core performance working because in Fusion, you can't really utilize a lot of cores of the CPU. So the higher single core performance you have, the better it is in Fusion. In GPU effects, we're not gonna see a massive difference, but yet at the same time, the standard overall score and extended overall score is higher because the iGPU in there can play back much more codecs or hardware accelerate much more codecs than on the Ryzen side. So generally the 12900K is roughly seven to 18% faster depending on the application here in the creative tasks than the Ryzen 5950X. The only case where I would recommend the 5950X over the 12900K is when you're working in a blender or some big 3D modeling software where having more cores and utilizing them all at the same time or rendering overnight is much better on the Ryzen system because it's gonna run cooler and consume less power but actually gets more done as we saw in the Blender benchmarks. Anything else where you have video or photo editing where single core performance and the iGPU is like a combined performance of all of them, the 12900K seems to be a better choice. But when we're looking at the price and you can see that the AMD comes in at 685 dollars or somewhere around that ballpark and the Intel is $615 you can see that the Intel is cheaper option and you might be thinking do you know what maybe this makes more sense to go with Intel another thing to consider is the motherboards you probably heard that the 12th gen motherboards are more expensive than the AMD motherboards and yes that is true but at the same time you're getting more specs for the same motherboard so if you're looking at the motherboard that's like the same model motherboard an x570 for example and z690 then the z690 will give you more specs for the same model motherboard than on the amd system as well so the price difference really you're getting more specs at the same time as well and also if you want to have some cheaper motherboard options there is cheaper motherboard options on the intel this way on the intel system as well but not as much as on the amd one AMD motherboards are cheaper, but yet the overall system comparison will be roughly the same if we don't consider the DDR5. If you go with DDR4, then yes, they roughly cost around the same. If you go with DDR5, the Intel system is more expensive. So hopefully this video now showed you which one is better system for you. I'm gonna leave the links for both of these systems, the test systems, as well as the CPUs in the description below if you wanna check them out. Thanks very much guys for watching. Likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you'd like to see more, and let me know which comparison should I do next. Bye bye.